tonight on OC News, gas prices are rising. Find out exactly how much a gallon of gas will cost you and how much it's impacting students here on campus. Plus, after a devastating fire destroys much of the famous Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, talks of reconstruction are already underway. We find out who is donating to help rebuild this historic monument and how long it will take. And later, festival goers can expect some changes at Coachella this weekend after an unexpected fire surprised many campers over this past weekend. We have all the details. OC News starts now. Welcome to OC News. I'm Janelle Pedroza. And I'm Erica Guerra. OC News is brought to you by the Broadcast Journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. Gas prices in California have skyrocketed over the past few weeks, making them the highest prices in five years. Let's send it out to our reporter Brandy Flores, who is, has more on the story. Brandy? That's right. Gas prices all over California are on the rise. Not only does this affect the residents of California, this also affects students at Cal State Fullerton. With 40,000 students enrolled, over 50% are commuters. Now, I was able to speak with a few Cal State Fullerton students to see how this affects them. As students, we already spend a lot on like tuition and books and everything. It's just an added stressor, and especially because it's like a commuter campus, and so a lot of people commute and so that's definitely impacts them. I'm always like low on my budget yeah. <laughs> and the, you know this increased gas price is kind of like critical to me. I'll have to like cut down the food. <laughs> oh. like I actually sold my previous car because of the gas prices. I went from a Infiniti M35 to a Toyota Hybrid and I spend maybe 80 bucks a month uh, for about a month and a half of driving. Yeah. If I hadn't done that I would have been filling my tank every month every week and it would have been about forty dollars a week to save gas already in the car you know um, I, I only come to campus twice a week already like I, I could do like three times a week but more than that it's just it's a lot right. you know it's not worth it there are plenty of people who cannot really even pay their rent in California and now the gas prices will well, we had an opportunity at the last election with a, a measure to get rid of the gas tax to, to eliminate some of that and it failed so uh, I think it's a little bit more, you know, having to put some regulation changes, maybe uh, maybe see if we could even the playing ground. But it's always going to be more expensive for gas in California compared to other states. Side of a mobile gas station right across the street from Cal State Fullerton. And you can see for yourself, regular gas is nearly at $4. And if you have a car that needs that special kind of gas, it's already at $4. And it just might start increasing even more. Now, with all everything with the gas crisis, that's all I have. Back to you guys in the studio. Nearly 1,000 schools in the Denver area closed today as authorities search for 18-year-old Solfis, who traveled to Colorado, bought a firearm, and was reportedly infatuated with the Columbine shooting. Law enforcement officials now say she's been found dead. Here's the latest. A manhunt in Colorado finally over. We are relieved that the threat to our schools and community is no longer present. Authorities announcing 18-year-old Sol Pais, a Florida senior who made credible threats to Colorado schools, was found dead. The FBI recently just confirmed that, um, that they have found uh, Ms. Pais um, deceased from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Officials say Pais was, quote, infatuated with the Columbine massacre and made threats after flying from Miami to Denver Monday night and legally purchasing a pump-action shotgun and ammunition just days before the 20th anniversary of Columbine, prompting Denver Public Schools and almost 20 other school districts to close. When this threat came in, uh, we are used to threats, frankly, at Columbine. This one felt different, it was different, and uh, it certainly had our attention. School officials say normal school operations will resume tomorrow with heightened safety and security procedures. Um, we're not a tourist attraction, and we're not a place for you to come and gain inspiration. I'm Kristen Holmes reporting. An Anaheim man is behind bars after a bizarre crime spree in Lake Forest that included a stabbing a carjacking, and a hit and run. For a 25-year-old, James Melendres is accused of the bloody rampage that took place yesterday around 5 p.m. 
It's alleged he got into a fight near a Salvation Army store on Mercury Road and Rockfield Boulevard. He fled on foot, breaking into a senior housing apartment, but fled when the residents confronted him. Then he broke into another home, grabbed a knife, and chased the woman into the street and began stabbing her. A good Samaritan stopped to help. That's when the suspect chased him. The suspect took his car. He abandoned that car blocks away and tried to carjack another motorist. A bicyclist in intervened with pepper spray. That's when police were finally able to apprehend the man. Cal State Fullerton's police department announced that a man with a knife was reportedly seen in the Nutwood parking structure on Tuesday around 2 p.m. A mass email was sent out to students and faculty warning them to use alternate routes around campus. The suspect was described as a 20-year-old black male about 5 feet 6 inches with yellow frizzy hair. He was reported to be carrying a 3-inch knife. Cal State Fullerton PD located the subject around 4 p.m. He was a non-student and had a multi-function tool in his possession. The university held a master plan open house last week and discussion on the Arboretum was a high priority for the attendees. Our reporter Eduardo Hernandez was there to get all the details. Cal State Fullerton looking to renew its campus in the next couple of years. A campus master plan meeting was held to allow the community to express its concerns. It was no surprise to many when one audience member interrupted the presentation to discuss the Arboretum concerns. Danny Kim, Vice President of Administration and Finance, came into the scene to allow questions from the public and to address any rumors of the Arboretum being eliminated. Uh, well, the question I get asked very frequently is, um, why does the Arboretum need to be included in the master plan? So this is going to be a lengthy answer, but I think that may activate an answer to a lot of other questions you may want to ask. The, the simple answer to that question, why the Arboretum needs to be is because it's on state property. On the petition, or also the quotes I saw uh, in the paper, the press suggested that there will be a parking lot built on the Arboretum. And that is farthest from the truth because we have no reason to build a parking lot. A flat parking lot you know, is not very efficient, uh, given we're a land lot. Um, also, it does not benefit the uh, Arboretum, it really doesn't benefit us. Even with Kim emphasizing the Arboretum is safe from parking, audience members were still in concern of their opinion being validated. Using sticky notes to express their concern was not a user-friendly method. The comments here are on post-it notes that can be blown away or taken off by anyone who disagrees with them. And although it's been said that these comments are being recorded somehow and will be somehow documented and posted, I, I have my doubts. But I did find the notes from the previous meeting, I believe it was June of last year. The number one favorite place on campus is the Arboretum. And to not have a single option where it remains as is or under the purview of those managing it now, I think is irresponsible. The new generation is also aware of this and made their views heard. On July 2020, there will be a last review of the plans and a decision will be made, including the fate of the 26 acres of Arboretum. Reporting for OC News, I'm Eduardo Hernandez. Coming up after the break, a new YouTube record has been broken. We tell you which popular boy band broke it and find out what international superstar just released a documentary showcasing her personal life when we discuss your entertainment news. And finally, there is a fast food chain in Colorado that is putting a little more than secret sauce in their food this weekend. What might that ingredient be? We will tell you after the break. Stay tuned. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. Uh how can I help my daughter with her reading? Information on hot water heating. Uh, no. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. 
World music playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. ExploreUnderstood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Hundreds of years of French history is forever gone after a fire engulfed one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world, the Notre Dame Cathedral. Across France are ringing their bells in honor of the landmark just two days after a fire ripped through the through the Gothic masterpiece. Mary has more on this story. Mary? After Monday's devastating fire at the Notre Dame Cathedral, French President Emmanuel Macron has set an ambitious five-year timeline in rebuilding history. Though experts say full restoration will likely take 10 to 15 years, U.S. Ambassador to France Jamie McCourt has hoped the rebuilding will succeed much hope about rebuilding it and all the things that it can be. President Macron has said it will be even better than it was before. The French are incredibly resilient and they are, after all, les batailleurs. So, New aerial images show how the fire ravaged the cathedral's roof and spire. On Wednesday, emergency crews continued to pick through the charge remains of the ancient wooden beams. Officials say they are still investigating the cause, but believe it was accidental. They have interviewed dozens of employees working at the church before the fire broke out. Meanwhile, money for restorations continue to pour in. Nearly $1 billion have been donated so far, including millions from luxury brand LF LVMH. We thought that uh, whatever we do, we have to donate money, but we also have to donate time. President Trump on Twitter says he has spoken with Pro Pope Francis and has, quote, offered the help of our great experts on renovation and construction, as I did in my conversation yesterday with President Emmanuel Macron of France. This is just in. Disney has donated $5 million for their restoration. That's all I have. Back to you guys at the desk. As Coachella employees are preparing for the second weekend, workers are still cleaning up the aftermath from last weekend. Not only were the shows lit, but a mobile shower caught on fire at the Empire Polo Grounds at the Coachella Music Festival in Indio, California. The fire occurred Saturday morning at 2 6 a.m. It is unknown to what started this startling fire. One trailer was found in bad condition while another was demolished. The Riverside County Fire Department contained the fire by 2.28 a.m. Say there were no injuries. The fire is still under investigation. Guess who's included in the Times 100 Most Influential People issue this year? The Time Magazine just released the 2019 100 most Influential People issue, which features singer Taylor Swift, actor Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and actress Sandra Oh. They also honored CBS News anchor Gail King, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, and Egyptian soccer star Mohamed Salah. Some other high-profile names on the list include President Donald Trump, Special Counsel Robert Mueller, and former First Lady Michelle Obama. This is the 18th year Time has released its list of 100 most influential people. BTS now holds the record for the most viewed video on YouTube. In just 24 hours, the 74.6 million views. They beat the K-pop girl group Blackpink's Kill This Love, which had 58.7 million views. Their latest single, Boy With Love, featuring American singer Halsey, has more than 147 million views so far. According to their management company, the music video also has the fastest video to reach 100 million views. BTS is the first Korean, South Korean boy group to present an award at the Grammy Awards and a group to speak at the United Nations. And last weekend, BTS became the first Korean boy band to perform on Saturday Night Live. They had 3 million records, 
of their latest album, Persona, and it is expected to top the charts. Beyonce, Beyonce's new documentary, Homecoming, is now available on Netflix. Tell the truth to yourself first and to the children. The film Homecoming is about Beyonce and her performance at the 2018 Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival. It also includes interviews and behind the scenes footage during the show. Beyonce paid homage to historically black colleges and university in the U.S. Beyonce also wrote, produced and directed the film. Besides presenting her story, Beyonce dropped Homecoming, the live album on her husband Jay-Z's streaming service. Rocky Mountain High has got a whole new meaning to it. Carl's Jr. announced on Wednesday that they will add a Rocky Mountain High cheeseburger delight to their menu. The cheeseburger will contain a sauce infused with cannabis oil, also known as CBD. This burger will be available for only for a day in one Denver, Colorado, location that day being April 20th. This day is referred to as a cannabis-oriented day, an annual celebration on April 20th, hence the phrase 420. Colorado is one of the 11 states in the U.S. to legalize some form of marijuana. They are using this test day to decide whether the CBD burger will permanently stay on the menu. The thir this Thursday, Fullerton Market is back with new vendors and live entertainment. Our reporter Megan took a visit to the market to get the inside scoop. Fullerton is a place filled with great people with a sense of community. This is especially apparent on Thursday nights when Wilshire Boulevard in downtown Fullerton bustles with people visiting the Fullerton Market. The Fullerton Market offers activities for people of all ages. The Kids Corner has a bounce house, face painting, and even a train for young children to enjoy. Across the way, there is a beer and wine garden for the older guests to enjoy. When you walk the tents at the Fullerton Market, you can find anything from jewelry, clothes, food stands, and even fresh produce from local vendors. Located in the heart of downtown Fullerton, many college students come to buy produce, enjoy the live music, and the ambiance that they believe they can't get anywhere else. What I like about the Fullerton Market is that a lot of people come and it's a great community to spend time with. Um, there are different kinds of cultures, there's music, people are dancing, people are eating new types of food. Um, it's a very diverse place to be and it's a nice little getaway from your everyday life. And so I always try and come on Thursdays because it's a very fun environment and a little escape to my daily life. I'm from San Diego and there is a farmer's market down there in San Diego and I love the farmer's markets. So when I moved over here for college, I really wanted to find a similar space and finding this market here in Fullerton, in downtown Fullerton was amazing because it makes me feel like I'm still at home, even if it's just Thursday nights. Small business owners from all over Southern California come to sell their goods and meet great people along the way. There's a little bit of everybody that's local here, and they all show up, and kids play on the playground, and so there's there's you can you can feel that you're in a, a a group that you know cares about the other people in the group. It's just a really awesome community. You can bring your dog, which most markets don't allow. Um, it's just a it's a really comfortable, nice sort of family place for everybody to spend their evening and get something to eat and listen to some music. And Downtown Fullerton is busy tonight, and as you can see behind me, people are loving the live entertainment. The Fullerton Market happens here every Thursday night, featuring different vendors, live entertainment, and activities for children and adults to enjoy. For more information regarding the Fullerton Market, you can head to cityoffullerton.com. There you can find any information about the market itself, including the activities, the vendors, the live entertainment, and even how to be a vendor here at the market. Now, if you enjoy the Fullerton Market, you'll also enjoy the Fullerton Farmer's Market, which is produce only, happening every Wednesday morning, featuring vendors from all across California. If you have nothing to do this Thursday, bring your friends and your family to enjoy fresh produce, friendly people, and wonderful live entertainment. Reporting from downtown Fullerton, I'm Megan Tate with OC News. Find out which European team is celebrating their Cinderella season when we talk about sports. And there is a sweet Easter celebration making sure that all kids are being treated fairly. This story will surely leave you feeling hoppy. We will see you this short commercial break. Patriotism. 
It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Find out which quarterback just signed a new contract. The new NFL season cooking, and is there a new Cinderella in Europe? And I don't mean the princess. With this and more in sports, we go to Eduardo Hernandez. Thanks, and yes, we have a lot going on in sports. So let's not waste any time and cross over the Atlantic to Europe to talk about Champions League action. Yes, Barcelona's in the semifinals, and Messi had another game for the ages. That's normal. But what's not normal, or not important, that's not important. There's a new Cinderella story similar to Leicester City in 2016. Ajax obtained a monumental 2-1 result in Turin yesterday, qualifying them to their first semifinals since 1997. Previously, they had eliminated Real Madrid in the Bernabeu, and they don't seem to be finished. In recent time, this is the most relevant Ajax has been since Johan Cruyff was playing. Boy, would he be proud. I'm sure Barcelona and Tottenham, Liverpool, would not want to face this electric style of Dutch football. If you can't wait for September football, at least now you're able to mark your calendars because the NFL 2019 schedule will be released at 8 p.m. Oh, that's about right now. The NFL schedule has been released, and week one will start with Packers at Chicago in Thursday night football on September 5th and end with an AFC battle Sunday night between the Steelers visiting the defending champions New England Patriots. The London schedule has also been released, with games being held at the new Tynham Hotspur Stadium and Wembley Stadium. Someone who can't wait for the 2019 season to start is Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson. Wilson signed a new deal with the Seattle Seahawks of a four-year, $140 million extension that includes a $65 million signing bonus and makes the quarterback the highest paid player in the NFL. The NFL champion and five-time Pro Bowler looks to bounce from the last season's early exit against the Cowboys and delivered joy to the city of Seattle. Bouncing back is what Cal State Fullerton baseball team will look for when they travel to the Aloha State. The team will have a three-game contest against the Rainbow Warriors and will attempt to improve their 3-3 three three conference record. The series starts tomorrow at 9.35 p.m. and will end on Saturday, April 20th, 20th at 9.05 p.m. And forget about the Warriors blowing a 31-point lead against the Clippers. The 62-win Tampa Bay Lightning got swept by the Columbus Blue Jackets and suffered perhaps the worst postseason flop in NHL history. Take a look at the re reaction of the final moments of Game 4. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the NFL playoffs. Tonight, the Pacers visit the Celtics, Boston against the Bucks, and Houston look to gain a two-game advantage. Well, that's all I have for sports. I'll send it back to the desk. The New York Police Department and Fire Department helped out with the second annual beeping egg hunt. An egg hunt for visually impaired children. Take a look. It's an Easter egg hunt with egg-sighted kids and beeping eggs, so children who are visually impaired can find them. <laughs> the eggs are wired for fun by the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. This year they got a hand from the NYPD and the FDNY. It's the second annual beeping egg hunt in New York City, started by Holly Bonner, who writes the blog Blind Motherhood. 
Our goal going forward is to have at least one in every borough. Today it expanded from Staten Island to the Bronx. 150 kids took part at the Lavelle School for the Blind in Williamsbridge. I found the eggs without getting so scared. And she has a big smile like she does now. Yep. Assistant Principal Denai Fraser says the school had to explain what an Easter egg hunt was. And how special and amazing this actually is. The students range in age from 3 to 21. The experience challenges them to utilize their hearing and sense of touch. Putting it in the bag, that's a skill they use in the classroom um, to strengthen up their, their hand movement. I have my 12 eggs. The eggs are traded in for chocolates with the help of volunteers from the Yonkers Millennium Lions Club. And today, another sensory experience. Nice, right? Nice and soft. Petting the NYPD's mounted horses and canines. It was a very heartwarming experience. Anytime you give back to these children and see the smiles on their faces, that's what it's all about. We hope everyone has an excellent weekend. Enjoy Easter if you celebrate the holiday. I'm sure everyone will enjoy the chocolate gummy buddies. Or how about those peeps? Those are my favorite. We'll see you back here next week. Have a